Chairman of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC, Lieutenant General Asim Salim Bajwa, has landed in the middle of a scandal over his family's rise in assets that coincided with his elevation in the army and subsequently in politics. Now the government of Pakistan is distancing itself from the corruption allegations against Bajwa, saying that General Bajwa will himself explain his family's growth in assets. Well, Pakistan's information minister, Shibli Faraz, took to Twitter late on Monday and said that Asim Bajwa will explain in detail the news about his assets in a few days. This statement came after the government's initial response to brush aside the controversy appeared to be ineffective. Now, Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Saturday had questioned the authenticity of the website that published the investigative article that revealed the rise of Bajwa and his family's assets. Listen in. خبریں تو بریک ہوتی رہتی ہیں دیکھنا ہے کہ اس میں سچائی کتنی ہے اس میں صداقت کتنی ہے ٹھیک ہے نا عرض یہ ہے کہ آج کل ایک بدقسمتی سے مجھے کہنے کی اجازت دیجیے ایک روایت بن گئی ہے کہ ہم خبر پہلے چلا دیتے ہیں اور تصدیق بعد میں کرتے ہیں کہ اس خبر میں سچائی کتنی ہے اس میں حقیقت کتنی ہے اس میں میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ کسی شریف آدمی کی بے جا پگڑی نہیں اچھالنی چاہیے اور ہمیں ذمہ دارانہ کردار ادا کرنا چاہیے An investigative and fact-checking website based in Pakistan last week traced the growth of the Bajwa family's business empire in the United States and Pakistan and claimed that there was a correlation between the retired army officer's political clout and his family's investments. As per the website, the Bajwa family's business empire comprises of 99 companies based out of four countries. Now this includes a pizza delivery franchise, which alone is worth around $40 million. Now, the Bajwa family has been accused of unfairly investing and buying property in the U.S. It turns out that according to the assets declaration form that General Bajwa had filed with the government, claimed his wife did not hold any foreign assets. But the investigative piece says that Bajwa's wife, Farouk Zeba, is associated with or is a shareholder in 85 companies, 82 of which are foreign-based. Now, the net worth of these businesses and properties jointly owned by Farouk Zeba stands at over $52 million. Now, the corruption scandal has come as a huge embarrassment to Prime Minister Imran Khan, who had appointed ex-Pakistan Army General Asim Bajwa to oversee the implementation of the CPEC project. He was also appointed as the Prime Minister's special assistant on media. Meanwhile, the ex-Prime Minister's daughter, Mariam Nawaz, who herself, along with her father, has been convicted in graft charges, questioned Imran Khan's silence on corruption allegations against the CPEC chairman, Asim Bajwa. मिल गई फलां को भेल मिल गई फलां छूट गया फलां को कोर्ट ने रिलीफ दे दी तो मेरा एक असाब का नारेटिव कमजोर हो गया तो मैं ये सवाल करना चाहती हूँ इमरान खान से और उनकी अकुमत से कि आज जब आसिम सलीम बाजवा साहब पे इल्जाम लगे हैं सबूतों के साथ तो एक असाब का नारेटिव किस गार में बैठ के सो रहा now, his only response on the matter was on Twitter on the 27th of August, where he rebutted the findings in the article and called it a malicious propaganda against him and his family. Now, the chairman of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC, Lieutenant General Asim Bajwa, has landed in the middle of a huge scandal over the family's rise in assets that have coincided with his elevation in the army and subsequently in politics. Now, one of the, the government of Pakistan is distancing itself from the corruption allegations against Bajwa now, and they are saying that the general will explain his family's growth in assets himself. 
We heard this from Pakistan's Information Minister Shibli Faraz, who took to Twitter late last night and said that Asim Bajwa will explain in detail the news about these assets in a few days. But this statement came after the government's initial response to brush aside the controversy was ineffective and was not accepted. Now, Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Saturday had questioned, firstly, the authenticity of the website that published this article, this investigative article that revealed the rise of the assets of the Bajwa family. Now, we know that this investigative and fact-checking website, which is based in Pakistan, last week traced the growth of the Bajwa family's business empire in the United States and in Pakistan and two other countries, and also claimed that there was a correlation between the retired army officer's political clout and his family's investments. As per the findings, this website, uh, the Bajwa family's business empire comprises of 99 companies, all based out of four different countries. One of the biggest is a pizza delivery franchise, which alone is worth $40 million, 40 million US dollars. And the Bajwa family has been accused of unfairly investing and buying property in the US as well. And it turns out that according to the assets declaration form that uh, General Bajwa had filed, he did, not, uh, he did not acknowledge any of these assets. Now for more on this, we are being joined by our senior journalist Amish Shan live from Lahore for more insight on this story. Welcome, thank you for being with us. The government of Pakistan is now distancing itself from these corruption allegations against General Bajwa, but this is also a change intact from their earlier uh, statement trying to downplay the uh, scandal. What do we make of this move? The Pakistani government is always going to downplay uh, any scandal that uh, arises uh, against their allies and their creators. So it is widely believed that the military establishment in the last uh, general elections uh, allowed the Pakistan Tariq e Insaf, the current uh, ruling uh, party, uh, to form the government. And um, it also allowed it to form uh, the government in the pra Punjab province. So uh, the Pakistan Tariq e Insaf has been talking about accountability and punishments for the, those who are allegedly corrupt. But the same people that they had been charging um, from the opposition parties, the very same people, once they joined their ranks, these people, they, start, they stopped appearing in national accountability cases, and uh, some of them, they had the cases dropped against them. So this, uh, this anti-corruption drive uh, by the government is uh, against the opposition parties, against media, against civil societies, but it is not against its own allies. And uh, the military establishment at least is an ally, if not the creator of uh, this current government. Absolutely. So I don't think that... I... Yes, on that, this definitely seems to highlight the economic might of the army in Pakistan. The thing with the, mil uh, the army in Pakistan is that a lot of um, funding that it is given officially is also not accounted for. There have been a lot of uh, concerns that the military establishment itself, not just the individuals, but the institution itself, needs to be accountable to the people because these, because it's the people's money that is being used to uh, for its upkeep. However, uh, no political government so far has been able to even talk about it openly in the parliament, in the lower house or the upper house. And it's because the military establishment is an untouchable uh, too powerful an institution um, to you know to ask for their accounts and especially when it comes to powerful um, generals including retired generals once they uh, you know once they're asked uh, about their alleged corruption and how their wealth multiplied many folds they rebut these accusations by saying that we rebut your accusations that's that's all the rebuttal is mm. Right. The Pakistan Army's role in the economy there is well known. 
However, this is the first time that there is such a public response to such a senior level uh, top officer's shady dealings. Do you think that this, uh, that his fate is in the balance or do you think this matter will fizzle out? I don't see it the way a lot of people are commenting that um, the military establishment or members of the military establishment or the former members of the military establishment are now having to explain themselves. Um, I don't see it like that. I see it in a different light. The way I see it is that it's going to be an incomplete explanation, a generalized explanation of we did not do anything wrong, there's no wrongdoing, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to be a fact-based uh, the way the politicians or the journalists in Pakistan are being asked. I was asked to provide where did I buy my underwear and personal things from seven years ago. So this is obviously not on this level, but or not on any level. They will have to provide receipts, money trail, or any of the sort that other civilians are being asked for, especially civilians who are criticizing the current government and the military's role in supporting this current government. So I don't see it as they've been forced or asked uh, to you know, reply to these accusations. It is, uh, it is only once they chose to reply to these accusations that the mainstream media even allowed those reports to come on air as well. So this, this opportunity will be used to further um, enhance the image of the accused and it will not have any real explanation because it has never had any real explanation. Only the chief editors and the reporters and the opposition politicians, they are the ones behind bars for unproven corruption. The others who are in power, who've always been in power, will only be given another opportunity to boost their ego and their reputation in the eyes of the public and allowed so to stay blanket things like we did not do it, full stop, no evidence required. Hmm. Amir, thank you very much for bringing us the latest in that analysis there. Now the United States.